Welcome to this episode of our program Daily Debate. As usual, we will be discussing an important uh, topic. Tonight we'll be shedding light on the uh, Egyptian uh, ports and developments that has occurred to such uh, um, uh, a very unique uh, part of uh, Egypt since the 30th of uh, June revolution. Egypt has taken stride and steps uh, through a comprehensive plan to upgrade its seaports and develop Egypt's ports on the Red Sea and the Mediterranean with the aim of leveraging the country's strategic geographic location. Egypt aims to leverage uh, this unique uh, position on the Red Sea and the Mediterranean to become a global trade and logistics center through transforming its ports into efficient multifunctional gateways as well as a series of projects that were uh, funded solely by Egyptian capital. The new Suez Canal with its economic and industrial zone is also a big addition to the political uh, leadership vision uh, in order to uh, sustain with its uh, 2030 vision for sustainable development. We'll be speaking about all that tonight in our uh, episode. Before we delve into our discussion, let me take uh, first the first top stories of the day. <coughs> and President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received a phone call from German Chancellor Olaf Scholz on Tuesday. Presidential spokesman uh, Councillor Ahmed Fami said the telephone conversation tackled means of fostering bilateral relations in various domains in addition to a number of regional and international issues of mutual concern. The two sides hailed the distinguished ties that bind the two nations and confirmed their desire to broaden ties and enhance frameworks of cooperation, especially at the economic and trade levels. This in addition to enhancing ties in the fields of technology transfer and joint manufacture especially in light of ongoing projects being carried out in Egypt and shared by German firms. President Sisi and Schulz agreed to continue intensified consultation and coordination between the two sides in this coming stage. Moving on to our next top story of the day, and Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Mabouli held a meeting with the CEO of the Egyptian uh, space agency Sharif Sidi on Tuesday. During the meeting, Medbouli reviewed the latest developments in the undergoing tests of Egypt's SAT-2 satellite at the Assembly Integration and Testing Center at the agency's headquarters in the new administrative capital. Sidi pointed out that the great experience gained by Egyptian CADs result from conducting these operations in Egypt in cooperation with Chinese experts. He noted that Egypt's Sat-2 satellite would be launched next October from the launching station in China, pointing out that the satellite will help achieve a number of sustainable development goals. The meeting also covered the space agency's missions in the near future, as well as requests related to the agency's budget and projects being implemented. The Prime Minister instructed concerned bodies to quickly provide necessary funding for the most urgent of these projects. And uh, finally, Egypt and Turkey announced on Tuesday that they had appointed ambassadors to each other's countries for the first time in a decade. Cairo and Ankara both issued statements announcing the upgrading of diplomatic relations between them to the level of ambassadors. The two foreign ministers said the move aimed to re-normalize bilateral ties and reflects the mutual will to develop relations between the two countries. Cairo named Amr al-Hamami as its new ambassador in Ankara, while Turkey named Saleh Mutulusin as its ambassador in Cairo. Right, and before we delve into our discussion, let's first have this quick report on Egypt's plans to upgrade its support to boost international trade. Let's watch. Ten years have passed since the glorious 30th of June revolution, but its events will remain engraved in the memory of Egyptians and its outcomes will shape the features of Egypt's future. 
The revolution was not just an uprising to overthrow a regime that was rejected by masses of the people, but rather a revolution to recover the identity of a nation, correct its course, and build a new modern state. It is a revolution that embodied the greatness of Egypt, its history and civilization, and united all the spectra of its people and institutions to get Egypt out of the dark tunnel in which it was walking. This popular revolution was a turning point and a dividing line between two eras. It was a turning point, making Egypt a state representing a success story and a role model that has a clear vision for the future that aims to become one of the largest 30th economies in the world for the first time. We see so many joint projects in agriculture, roads, housing, electricity, and development of Suez Canal Zone. During the past 10 years, Egypt has faced the most difficult challenges, but thanks to the efforts of President Al-Fatih Sisi, his proactive policies and his bold reforms, Egypt's economy was able to withstand and even achieve high growth. Thanks to the successes of the 30th of June revolution, Egypt is able to overcome challenges and complete its to achieve Egypt's vision 2030 of growth development and a decent life. In line with President Sisi's directives, Egypt aims to leverage its unique geographic position on the Red Sea and the Mediterranean to become a global trade and logistics center as the government's vision focuses on transforming Egyptian ports into efficient multifunctional gateways through a series of projects funded solely by Egyptian capital. Egypt has planned to upgrade its seaports at the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea to boost international trade and the entire project is estimated to be around $4 billion and covers 58 projects. At the same time, it plans to become a logistics hub in the Middle East and Africa. Egypt is known for its important seaports at the Mediterranean Sea, including Alexandria, the Kahleya, the Mietta, Arish, and East Port Said. Along with this, the port of Jarjoub is all set to become functional shortly. The plan aims to boost competitiveness of Egypt's ports, create added value, lure investments, and activate the flow of importation and exportation. Egypt also owns important ports on the Red Sea, such as ports of Ain Sukhna, Suez, Safag, and Weba, in addition to the specialized tourist and petroleum ports. The new plan is expected to wrap up by 2024. Many works have been done to upgrade the seaports, including building, berths, trading yards, new wharves, commercial and logistical areas, dredging shipping lanes and port docks, and linking them to the railway's electric train network. Additionally, Egypt has already invested $1.27 million to develop Ain Sukhna, one of the targeted ports at the Red Sea, and plans to make it a central port of the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. Right, welcome back. And uh, before I start with my uh, with our discussion, let me first welcome our guest, Dr. Mohammed Azam, board member of the International Association of Management of Technology. Thank you so much for being with us. Always a pleasure and honor being with you. Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, today we'll be speaking about the Egyptian revolution in this very particular area ports for the very first time. Egypt is using this very unique location in order to uh, uh, maximize the benefit of it. This has been neglected for years and years, and now it's up to, uh, it's up to time. So since the 30th of uh, uh, June revolution, and since uh, the president assumed uh, office, Egypt has made serious efforts through this comprehensive uh, plan to upgrade its seaports. How do you view that and how essential that is? Uh, uh, thank you for this question. Actually, it's uh, very essential and very uh, uh, something that is really required if you'd like to be uh, part of uh, the global trade uh, and becoming one of the top 20 economies within a few years. Uh, actually, if you look at the uh, Swiss Canal, Swiss Canal, we are privileged to have uh, Swiss Canal, and we paid enormous uh, price uh, uh, for years uh, and over uh, the last almost uh, 150 years uh, for having this uh, canal. And uh, of course, since the development of the concept of uh, Swiss Canal uh, economic zones as well, 
uh, we are witnessing totally different landscape here. Uh, if you look at Suez Canal, Suez Canal is responsible for 12% of the global trade. The global trade is almost $6.8 trillion a year. So uh, Suez Canal is responsible for almost $1 trillion US dollars uh, of trade coming through uh, this uh, canal. Uh, and uh, if you see, uh, Suez Canal is becoming responsible also for almost 30% of the container traffic all over the world. So we are talking here about a serious portion of uh, the global trade uh, coming through uh, Suez Canal. And uh, of course, this kind of development that has been uh, done over the last few years is enormous. It's remarkable uh, because you are not developing only uh, the canal itself, uh, but also you are developing economic zones. We have four economic zones around Swiss Canal, as well as six ports serving uh, the Swiss Canal. It's not becoming only uh, the, uh, the very famous uh, ports that we've, we've known for many years, that in, but today you have extra ports are serving this uh, corridor that includes ports like Arish in North Sinai, like a tour in South Sinai. So we are developing the whole area, not only the corridor of Suez Canal. And of course, this is a great opportunity for Egypt to attract more investment uh, and uh, having more economic activities within uh, the four industrial zones uh, among the Swiss Canal uh, economic zone and also you would be able uh, to becoming a real uh, industrial nation through the projects uh, in this uh, area as well as a key player in the domain of renewable energy because it's, uh, we, since COP27 uh, that took place uh, uh, last year in Sharm Sheikh we've seen a lot of uh, new uh, renewable energy projects, especially in the domain of uh, uh, the green hydrogen. Yes. Um, and this is very important uh, to become uh, one of the global suppliers for this kind of clean renewable energy. And this, the domain of uh, uh, hydrogen is, and the utilization of hydrogen in many instances oh. is becoming uh, the future of uh, the energy because uh, this is the most sustainable energy source on the planet because a planet is almost 70 percent water and you are segregate, segregating the hydrogen atoms from the oxygen atoms uh, and using the hydrogen for right. generating uh, clean power uh, for different uh, industries yes. and different applications. The Suez Canal Zone has its own uh, very specifications and, and it, it has its specialities. And, and indeed, we'll, ha we'll speak about uh, the Suez Canal uh, Zone in, in, uh, uh, at large, but um, uh, uh, we're speaking about ports and we return back. Before we uh, get back or come back to our discussion, let's just go out for the Adan and come back. Welcome back and uh, back to you, Dr. Razem. And uh, we're speaking about ports and how Egypt is making use or utilizing its atmosphere in order to uh, take the atmosphere benefit of uh, this, uh, these ports. And uh, the um, transformative port initiatives. Now we're not speaking just about the Swiss Canal Zone, but we're speaking also about the ports of Alexandria, we're speaking about the ports in Port Said in, in Ain Sukhna and others. And how Egypt is really uh, um, taking its utmost advantage of those ports, particularly at this time. How do you view that? Uh, this is again uh, to be part of uh, the global uh, trade uh, ecosystem. Uh, you cannot advance, you cannot uh, progress on the competitiveness uh, uh, ladder unless you have modernized state-of-the-art ports uh, because you are in need to provide better services to your clients, to your freight forwarders, uh, to the uh, liners, uh, to uh, the community of the international trade. Uh, so this is very important to have 
uh, holistic approach for modernizing the ports, uh, not only seaports, but also airports, as well as dry ports, uh, connecting ports with uh, uh, advanced state-of-the-art railway system. So you are building a complete network of uh, uh, transportation. You are uh, building a complete uh, advanced network to transport goods uh, across the country. And of course, you need such thing because you are supposed to be one of uh, the players in uh, the initiative of uh, Belt and Road. Uh, that uh, the the initiative uh, that Chinese, um, the initiative, Chinese yes. initiative and of course uh, Egypt's always in the middle, uh, so you need to be the gateway uh, for Africa. You need to be the gateway for uh, the Arab region. You need mm. uh, to be the gateway for uh, Europe, especially Southern Europe. And you cannot do this unless you are uh, equipped with the right uh, facilities and uh, the right infrastructure. That's why modernization of the whole transport system that including uh, ports uh, is part uh, or on the top of the Egyptian uh, cabinet agenda and the Egyptian state agenda uh, and this is uh, the, uh, actually the name of the game. Uh, you need to be competitive in all aspects related to uh, economy. Uh, you need to be competitive uh, according to uh, the international standards. That's why Egypt has invested uh, a lot of uh, money and effort in modernizing its transport system. Uh, of course, uh, seaports are on the top of that. Um, um, I, I, hear, I hear you have to say that we have upgraded the Egyptian ports at an estimated cost of 63 billion pounds almost. And uh, um, uh, of course this full initiative I guess there are 58 projects uh, for upgrading those uh, 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 f uh, those ports and would be finalized by 2024. Uh, from your point of view how would upgrading such ports enable it to become a logistic hub in the Middle East region and um, in Africa. I mean here we are part of both areas, the Middle East and, and, and Africa. So how would that enable us to uh, be a logistic trade hub and, and, and of course we're seeking also to be a, an energy hub. How? Uh, simply, uh, if you have uh, a modern system that is uh, capable to meet the international standards uh, when it comes to handling uh, containers, for example, yeah. uh, to actually everyone needs uh, a, a system, an ecosystem that is competitive, uh, an ecosystem that is efficient. Uh, because efficiency and time management, uh, uh, saving time in such business is considerable uh, factor of attracting uh, goods uh, to your ports. Mm. So uh, modernization coupled with uh, uh, equipment and the proper technology for having a better uh, efficient system to handle uh, containers, to handle goods, to handle uh, shipping, to handle uh, uploading and downloading uh, of uh, goods, uh, transporting uh, goods uh, from the airport uh, to other uh, markets, either domestically or regionally. Uh, so this is uh, uh, very important and this is why Egypt is modernizing the whole aspects of the transport system uh, because everything is connected. You are connecting mm -hmm. dots here and you cannot leverage one sector within your ecosystem and leaving another uh, sector behind. That's why you are working in parallel in all sectors uh, for the railway, for the seaports, for uh, the roads, for uh, the uh, other uh, uh, transport ecosystem and they should be always synchronized and uh, of course you are investing in a lot of uh, technology when it comes to logistics uh, and uh, uh, trans transport management systems uh, as well as handling uh, the flow of uh, freight and, and goods within your uh, 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 ports and uh, to uh, and from uh, the connected markets that including the, your local market and your regional uh, markets as well. Speaking about connecting dots, <laughs> your very special terminologies. <laughs> I guess that one would you would like. Egypt is working on the digital transformation. 
of the uh, operation of ports linking, linking sea ports, as you said respectively, dry and internal uh, ports, consumption centers and manufacturing areas uh, through road and rail uh, networks. Um, how would that really facilitate the movement of the transportation and uh, the distribution of experts, particularly that we are on, uh, 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 on um, encouraging exportation for more uh, revenue and, and for the foreign currency and, and all that. How, from your point of view, would that mo move facilitate the movement, this digital transformation issue? Uh, digital transformation is always a key enabler. Uh, because technology is changing and disrupting the status quo. And you cannot excel, you cannot uh, progress unless you employ technology to the maximum. And the uh, area of transport is one of the technology domains that uh, is witnessing uh, a lot of development here in Egypt as well as uh, all over the world. Because we are moving towards what's called self-thinking supply chain. Uh, this is, you are connecting both virtual words and the physical words through utilization of technology. Uh, at the core, it will be uh, artificial intelligence, uh, data analytics, uh, data mining, and uh, you are witnessing a, a revolution actually in this domain worldwide uh, because you need to manage uh, the whole ecosystem, the whole supply chain end to end from consumer to the producer and vice versa. This including uh, the, when the uh, consumer trigger uh, an order and uh, this order goes to the manufacturing uh, uh, facilities and the manufacturing facilities starting producing the goods uh, that are required by the uh, consumer. And this would be uh, in a way uh, having a sort of uh, transport uh, through uh, the e-commerce platforms. This is uh, part of uh, the global trade now. Uh, actually 15% of the global trade is through um, the e-commerce platform. Uh, as well as you are uh, connecting uh, the manufacturer with the whole suppliers up to the retailer, up to back to the consumer. Especially the, the consumer demands and the consumer uh, is becoming very sophisticated. And we are in the era of customization. Uh, we are not in the era of mass production anymore. Uh, this because of uh, the changing behavior of uh, the consumer. That's why we are seeking to have what's called self-thinking uh, supply chain uh, ecosystem. And that's why digital transformation is a very uh, important and is very pivotal uh, factor in this regard. Because you cannot connect both virtual worlds uh, and uh, the physical world with coupled with the consumer uh, demands and the very sophisticated uh, uh, consumer demands and be able also to uh, consider the disruption that are taking place all over the world. We've seen this in, uh, during the, the uh, COVID-19 breakout and we've seen this uh, during uh, uh, the Ukrainian crisis that took place uh, last February 2022. So if you need to be agile, you need to be resilient, you need to have uh, this kind of uh, technology in your uh, supply chain ecosystem. Uh, yes. Otherwise, you wouldn't be uh, agile and resilient and wouldn't be able to forecast the changes uh, and the disruption and to be prepared uh, to meet uh, such uh, uh, very uh, unprecedented uh, uh, challenges that we are Indeed. witnessing today. Indeed. Before we continue on with our uh, uh, discussion, let me first uh, take uh, this second report and June 30th turning point, causing Egypt to take off economically at level of services. Let's watch. The 30th of June revolution was also a defining moment in the history of this precious homeland. Ten years on, and the picture has completely changed. Egypt began to stabilize only after President Fattah Sisi assumed power in June 2014. And even then, the country was forced to fight the remnants of terrorist groups and help the state stand on its feet again. President Sisi was able to make a successful deal with the International Monetary Fund, 
which helped reinvigorate their local economy, making it withstand the economic shock of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020 and economic damage of Russia-Ukraine war in 2022. President Sisi's recent call for a national dialogue to set Egypt's political and economic priorities is a natural extension of the June 30th revolution. The call reflects the strength of the state as it was reconstituted after the revolution. Egypt now aims to become one of the largest 30 economies in the world. However, thanks to the state's vision after the revolution, the government adopted a policy of diversifying energy production sources, which resulted in an increase in production capacities by more than 80 percent. Thanks to the successes of the June 30th revolution, Egypt is able to overcome these challenges and complete its path to achieve Vision 2030 of growth, development and decent life. President Sisi's administration has executed development projects in all fields to improve public services provided to citizens in health, education, power, housing, transport, water and energy. Egypt is planning to build 30 new fourth generation cities in the coming years to house the country's growing population, provide residents with high quality amenities, create the investment and reduce pressure on existing cities. These projects include the new administrative capital, new Alamein city, East Port Said, new Mansoura, new Smalaya, Il Galala, new Sheikh Zayed, October Oasis, West Bani Suif, new Malawi, West Kona, and new Toshka. The government has attached paramount importance to improving drinking water sanitation services through upgrading water and sewage systems nationwide. President Sisi has also been keen to place health system at the top of his priorities, with the sector being witnessing remarkable progress. Decent Life Initiative is aimed at providing better life for more than half the country's population and improving the standards of living infrastructure and services. The Ministry of Transport has devised a short and medium-term plan 2024-2030 to enhance relative advantages of Egyptian ports, revamp their infrastructure, attract private domestic and international partnerships. The immediate phase of the plan aimed at quick intervention emphasizes improving port operation and extending their hinterlands. Key initiative includes enhancing connectivity with major industrial cities, transportation networks, urban clusters, to ensure seamless movement of labor, raw materials, and products. This entails developing railway and road networks and relevant legislation. Right, welcome back. And back to what we were speaking about and the blue economy. Um, the blue economy is the winning card for coastal countries and we are a coastal country and uh, we are working on developing the our plans for the uh, uh, blue uh, uh, economy through a very comprehensive plan this that includes uh, upgrading the Alexandria ports the port side ports the Insokna ports and 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 all the ports the coast uh, or our coastal ports. Um, how can this transfer the country into a, 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 a very different uh, uh, center for the whole world? Uh, again, you are uh, utilizing your uh, advantage of, of the location. Uh, as well as, as you said, we are a coastal uh, country. We are. So you are um, investing more in such uh, blue economy projects, which is uh, uh, actually attracting more or very attractive for the investment uh, community all over the world. Um, and we can use this kind of uh, projects for availing more opportunities uh, for Egyptians to have sort of decent work as well as uh, developing the ecosystem that's serving the blue economy that's including education of course mm. and the uh, research and development institution uh, because you need to own a technology not only use a technology uh, so you are changing the landscape of the uh, economy uh, in Egypt in different uh, frontiers uh, across uh, different uh, sectors and of course each sector will benefit the other uh, sectors 
uh, the blue economy will benefit from the green economy and vice versa uh, and of course you uh, you need uh, the blue economy for uh, availing resources uh, for different uh, other sectors uh, either in the industrial sector or the agri uh, sector so it's it's very connected uh, uh, this is hasn't been in Egypt uh, for years and decades even uh, now you have the full picture and you're uh, able to connect the different things together you are connecting uh, actually dots and you are solving the puzzle uh, we haven't seen this uh, for decades uh, this is have have been witnessed only few, over the few uh, uh, years uh, since uh, the 30th, 30th of June uh, oh. revolution over the last nine ten years uh, this is for the first time in Egypt you have uh, a very clear objectives you you have uh, a clear uh, uh, picture a uh, big picture that uh, you are working according to a holistic approach and holistic uh, uh, agenda uh, you're seeing how you connect things together uh, so uh, you are helping each industrial sector uh, with the most important factors that would help to increase the competitiveness uh, of the sector that means more investment more investment means more projects more uh, projects means uh, better opportunity for youth uh, to work and uh, availing uh, thousands and thousands of uh, jobs uh, uh, to especially to the youth and of course ultimately you are increasing or doubling or even tripling your gdp which will be reflected on the GDP per capita, which is the ultimate goal of uh, any government. And we are progressing uh, very fast uh, uh, across uh, this uh, track for sure. The Suez Canal. And the Suez Canal have many aspects, right? The, uh, uh, the, 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 the regular Suez Canal, the new Suez Canal, and the Suez Canal economic and industrial zone. And this is very much uh, 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 of an important area to Egypt. How far did we make use of, of, of this very particular area through our plan or our uh, overall plan for developing the Suez Canal area and Sinai at large? This is the core actually. This is uh, the, the, the base, the foundation layer of developing the whole economy. So this canal is very important and it's a unique uh, corridor for the global trade. And uh, that's why you are not only having the new Suez Canal, but also you are building four economic zones and developing a port to serve the four economic zones. Over the last 12 months or even less, we were able to attract 6.3, sorry, 3.6 billion US dollar investment in uh, the economics. Yes, Let's indeed. include the manufacturing, uh, the ICT, uh, house uh, appliances or the white goods, uh, uh, tires, uh, pharmaceutical, chemical, uh, uh, renewable energy project, desalination uh, project. Uh, food and agribusiness uh, so you are building a real uh, industrial uh, foundation for uh, your country or the, the Egypt uh, to become a real industrial uh, nation so you are actually uh, fighting against all odds to, uh, to, to build such uh, great infrastructure and connecting the clusters all together uh, and even there is a room for uh, uh, small and medium enterprises within the Swiss Canal ecosystem that there's a cluster for a small and medium enterprises, not only large enterprises, mm. to help them to work as feeding industries for the larger industries. So you are building a totally different uh, scope here. You are building uh, a totally different uh, uh, landscape. 
that's why within a year you were, you were able to attract 3.6 uh, billion uh, direct investment in uh, many uh, projects over there and I think this area would be uh, the one of the most important area, especially in uh, the domain of uh, uh, the green hydrogen uh, uh, renewable energy, because this is the future of energy. And of course, this will make Egypt as one of the most important uh, uh, energy suppliers all over the world, especially in the renewable energy. Uh, and you're utilizing all your yes. resources for uh, building this uh, ecosystem in a proper way and of course yes. this will be reflected on Sinai in the Swiss Canal uh, zones and as, as a well navigation route also it has uh, um, the near Swiss Canal also has added value for the uh, 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 canal and definitely this has this is a prior project for Egypt Unfortunately, my time is out. I want to, uh, to end it here. And Dr. Mohamed Azam, uh, board member of the International Association of Management of, uh, of Technology, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, always a pleasure and honor. Thank you so my much. Pleasure. And dear viewers, many, uh, many thanks for watching. Tomorrow will be another important debate with uh, another colleague.